Cupertino TV Productions is pleased to present a discussion of the November 2018 ballot propositions by the Cupertino Sunnyvale chapter of the League of Women Voters. How do you do, and welcome to The Better Part. My name is Michael Lusk, and I'm a presenter for the League of Women Voters, Cupertino Sunnyvale. The League of Women Voters and Cupertino Senior Television are teaming to, up to bring you the, this presentation on the November 2018 California ballot measures. As you can see, in spite of the name, the League of Women Voters is made up of men as well as women. It would be more accurate to call ourselves the League of People Voters. But the League originated in the women's suffrage movement, and we can't bring ourselves to change the name because of the history attached to it. The League is a nonpartisan organization. It has two branches, an advocacy branch and a voter education branch. Neither branch ever takes positions on candidates or parties. The advocacy branch will sometimes take positions on issues or ballot measures, but I'm from the voter education branch, and we never take positions on anything. To vote in the November election, you must be registered to vote by October 22nd. If you register by mailing in a hard copy of the registration form, it must be postmarked no later than that date. But the easiest way to register is online at the Santa Clara County Registrar of Voters website. Before we start in on the ballot measures, let me describe what the League believes is a good approach for deciding on ballot measures. First, try to understand the content of the measure. Second, listen to what both sides say. Third, get any objective third party reporting on it you can from, ex for example, from trustworthy news sources or government organizations. Fourth, try to understand the motives of the people or organizations who support or oppose. And fifth, take a look at the sources of money for the supporting and opposing campaigns. If you feel you understand the measure and its consequences, then go ahead and vote yes or no. But voters can't be expected to devote huge amounts of time to research or to have expertise on every issue that may come before them on a ballot. If you don't understand a measure or you can't easily foresee its consequences or you think it's not an issue the voters should deal with, there's nothing wrong in leaving it for the legislature. That's what we pay them to do. Now, on to the propositions. There are 11 state measures on this November ballot. Eight of them were placed on the ballot by citizens and three were placed by the legislature. Props one through four are bond measures. Unfortunately, if you are, unless you are the type that loves frolicking through financial numbers, bond measures are always kind of a slog to get through, but hang in there, it gets more interesting later. Before getting into the bond measures individually, I think it helps to give a brief government bonds 101. Government bonds fall into two categories, general obligation bonds and revenue bonds. General obligation bonds are paid off from general tax revenue and the bond debt is counted as part of overall state debt. General obligation bond issues must be approved by the voters. Revenue bonds are paid off by dedicated revenue streams, not general taxes. It generally is not counted as part of overall state debt and normally doesn't require voter approval. The classic example is a bond issue used to finance the construction of a toll bridge. The bonds are paid off from the toll revenue. Bond financing is contrasted with pay-as-you-go financing in which revenue is accumulated until a project or a portion of a project can be paid for outright. The advantage of pay-as-you-go pay is that you don't have to pay interest costs. The disadvantage is it takes time to accumulate large sums of money in the, and in the meantime, that money is sitting around doing nothing. One last point, bond debt is incurred not when the bonds are approved by the voters, the debt is incurred when the bonds are sold. After they are approved, bonds can sit around unsold for years or even decades. There's no point in paying interest costs if there is an immediate need for the money. Now, on to the individual bond measures. Prop 1. Prop 1 is called the Veterans 
and Affordable Housing Bond Initiative. It was placed on the ballot by the legislature and it is one of four measures dealing with housing. It authorizes the state to issue $4 billion of general obligation bonds to finance a variety of loans, grants, and projects having to do with housing for vets, farm workers, and low-income families. One billion of it will go to home and farm loans for about 3,000 vets. The other three billion will go to annual subsidies for up to 30,000 low-income households and 7,500 farm worker households and will provide payment, down payment assistance for about 15,000 families. The one billion dollars going to veterans loans will be paid off by the veterans mortgage payments. The remaining three billion will be paid off by the state at a cost of about 170 million dollars annually for the next 35 years for a total cost of about six billion. The motive for Prop 1 and the other propositions dealing with housing is, of course, the high cost of housing in California, particularly in the coastal cities. Rents in California as a whole are 1.5 times the national average, and the cost of a house is about 2.5 times the average. Those costs are much higher in the coastal cities. There are over one half million homeless people in California. We can see here the state Senator Jim Bell authored the bill to put this measure on the ballot. We see it is also supported by Construction Labor and Contractors Organization and the League of California Cities. It's opposed by the California Republican Party and the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Prop 2 is another housing bond measure aimed at supplying housing for the mentally ill and it too was put on the ballot by the legislature. It authorizes the state to issue $2 billion of revenue bonds. The proceeds will be used to finance county programs for building or subsidizing housing for the mentally ill. To service the bonds, Prop 5 repurposes some of the tax revenue from an earlier measure, Prop 63 of 2004, which currently funds county programs for the mentally ill. Since, since 2004, many in the mental health field have come to think that such programs are more effective and less costly if the mentally ill, if the mentally Ill are in stable housing. However, diverting Prop 63 money previously used to fund ongoing county programs into paying off housing bonds has proven controversial. controversial. Some feel that voter approval is needed and that's why the legislature has placed this measure on the ballot when normally a revenue bond doesn't need voter approval. Prop 2 would allow the state to spend up to $140 million of county health funding annually to repay the bonds over 40 years for a total cost of $5 billion. Among the supporters are a construction labor group, the California Police Chiefs Association, and the Press Democrat. In opposition, we see the National Alliance on Mental Illness Contra Costa and Marianne Bernard, an attorney who filed suit against Prop 2. Proposition 3. Proposition 3 is entitled the Watershed and Water Infrastructure Bond Measure. It's a citizen's initiative. Prop 3 would authorize the state to issue about $9 billion of general obligation bonds. The proceeds would finance a variety of watershed and water infrastructure projects. The breakdown of spending is $2.5 billion for watershed protection and restoration, $2.1 billion for drinking water supply, wastewater treatment, and water conservation, $1.4 billion for aquatic wildlife habitat improvement and restoration, $1.2 billion for water facility upgrades, one billion for managing groundwater and 500 million for flood protection. There would be an annual cost to the state of 430 million dollars over 40 years for a total cost of 17.3 billion. Going on record in support are U.S. Representatives John Garamendi and Jim Costa, the California Wildlife Foundation, and the California Chamber of Commerce. The only organization going on record in opposition is the Central Solano Citizen Taxpayer Group. Prop 4. Prop 4 is called the Children's Hospital Bond Measure. It is a citizen's initiative. It authorizes the state to issue 1.5 billion's worth of general obligation bonds. 
The proceeds would be used to award grants to children's hospitals and hospitals with children's clinics for construction, expansion, and new equipment. Prop 4 was placed on the ballot by an association of children's hospitals. They say that because they treat children from families who often cannot cover the full cost of treatment, they have no surplus funds for new or upgraded equipment or facilities, and they need taxpayer help. To pay off, Prop 4 bonds will cost California about $80 million annually for 35 years for a total cost of, of $3 billion. Among supporters, we see the California Children's Hospital Association, the California Teachers Association, the Democratic Party, and San Jose Mercury News. Coming out in opposition are Gary Wesley, the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, and the California Republican Party. That's the last of the bond measures, but before leaving the subject of bonds entirely, let me give you some idea of California's overall debt picture. California currently has about $83 billion of general obligation debt, and servicing that debt takes about 4% of general fund revenue. If all the November general obligation bond measures passed, total bond debt would increase to $97 billion, and the debt service ratio, or the amount paid of the proportion of general fund revenues would peak at about 4.5%. The U.S. average debt service ratio is about 3%. But keep in mind that bond debt is only one part of California's total debt, and not the biggest part of that. The Department of Finance says that long-term debt associated with retiree pension and health costs amount to about $271 billion. So let us now bid a not-so-fond adieu to the bond measures and go on to the other propositions. Proposition 5 is entitled the Proposition 13 Tax Transfer Initiative. It is a proposed constitutional amendment put on the ballot by a citizen's initiative. It applies to home buyers age 55 or older or who are severely disabled or whose homes have been destroyed by a natural disaster. It allows such home buyers to transfer the assessed tax value of their old home to a new home adjusted by certain formulas. Current law already allows home buyers over 55 to transfer property tax valuations, but under more limited circumstances. Unlike current law, Prop 5 would allow the new home to be of any value. It could be greater or lesser than the old home. It would allow the new home to be anywhere in California, and it would allow the home buyer to move as many times as she, he or she wants. However, Prop 5 would result in property tax losses for cities, counties, and special districts growing over time to $1 billion per year. There would be similar increases in state costs to make up for the reduced school property tax revenue. Organizations coming out in support of Prop 5 are the California Association of Realtors, the California Chamber of Commerce, and the California Republican, Republican Party. Coming out against are the California Teachers Association, the California State Association of Counties, and the California Democratic Party. On to Prop 6. Prop 6 is entitled the Fuel Tax and Vehicle Fee Repeal. It is a citizen's initiative proposing to amend the Constitution. It's one of the most heated measures on the ballot, with political repercussions at the national level. Prop 6 would repeal the fuel tax increases and vehicle fees imposed by Senate Bill 1 of 2017. It would also amend the Constitution so as to require voter approval for any future new or increased fuel tax, vehicle fee, or transportation improvement fee. If Prop 6 is passed, it would reduce revenues intended for transportation infrastructure by $5.1 billion per year. A little background is useful here. The state is responsible for building and maintaining about 8% of total California road mileage, including 50,000 lane miles of pavement, 13,000 bridges, and 205,000 culverts. And the state helps to finance much of road spending at the local level as well. 
total road spending in California at all levels is about $35 billion, $35 billion a year, and $12 billion of that comes from the state. The central questions posed by Prop 6 are, does the California road system require major repair and improvement? Does the state need more and better public transportation? And if so, can the money be found elsewhere if the $5 billion per year of Senate Bill revenue, Senate Bill 1 revenue is cut? As to the last question, Prop 6 supporters think there is enough waste in California's road building and maintenance system, particularly Caltrans, so that if it were eliminated, it would make up for the loss of Senate Bill 1 revenue. They often point to a study by a libertarian think tank called the Reason Foundation which concludes that California spends 2.5 times the national average on its roads. Caltrans disputes the study, saying it makes invalid comparisons. Other studies conclude that California's spending is, on roads is about average if factors like usage, terrain, and degree of urbanization are taken into account. As you can see from this list of supporters, the national GOP is taking quite an interest in this measure. They have been quite open with their hopes that this issue will help the GOP retain their California seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. Coming, some of those coming out as against this measure are Governor Brown, the California Chamber of Commerce, the California Democratic Party, the California Highway Patrolmen's Association, and the San Jose Mercury News. Prop 7. Prop 7 is a proposed statute put on the ballot by citizens it would allow the legislature to extend daylight saving time to the whole year if the federal government also agrees. It would require a two-thirds vote of the California legislature to do so and a change in federal law. Supporters of Prop 7 include the California Democratic Party and California Representatives Kansen Chu and Lorenzo Gonzalez. Going on record as opposing are State Senators Hannah Beth Jackson and Jim Nilsen and Representative Philip Chen. Prop 8 is a proposed statute put on the ballot by Citizens Initiative. Prop 8 would cap private kidney dialysis clinics profits at 15% above allowable costs and require refunds to payers of anything above that amount. It defines what those allowable costs are. This is another one where some background is helpful. In 2016, 140,000 patients received dialysis treatment in California. The proportion of healthcare money spent on dialysis has risen rapidly in recent years due to dialysis patients living longer. Rising dialysis costs were a big factor in insurance companies withdrawing from the Obamacare exchanges. 72% of dialysis clinics in California and the, the US at large are owned by two companies. Davida Kidney Care and Fresenius Medical Care. Medical Care. Davida and Fresenius are very profitable companies. They have reported profits of 18 to 19 percent. Most dialysis treatments are paid for by Medicare or Medi-Cal, but these patients are unprofitable. Davida and Fresenius make almost all their profits from the 10 percent of patients with private health care insurance. Service Employees International Union, United Health Care Workers West, which I'll call UHW from now on, is a coalition of labor unions which represents 80,000 health care professionals. UHW has been trying to unionize Davida and Fresenius since 2016. UHW put Prop 8 on the ballot and pushed a very similar bill in the legislature, which failed to pass. Some think that UHW placed Prop 8 on the ballot and pushed the bill in the legislature in order to gain leverage in unionization negotiations. UHW claims that the goal of Prop 8 is apart from unionization efforts. Supporters include the sponsor of this measure, measure UHW, and other labor organizations, and the California Democratic Party. Opposing, we see the California Chamber of Commerce, the California Medical Association, the American Nurses Association, the San Jose Mercury, and the California Republican Party. Prop 10. Prop 10 is a citizen's initiative proposing a statute which would allow local rent control. Currently, 
most local rent control is prohibited by a state law called Costa Hawkins. Costa Hawkins prohibits local governments from imposing a rental control on any rental housing except apartment buildings first occupied before February of 1995 and mobile home rental units. In all cases, Costa Hawkins prohibits what's called vacancy control, which means landlords are free to set rents to market levels when a tenant moves out. Prop 10 would repeal Costa Hawkins, which would allow local governments to regulate all rental housing and to impose vacancy controls as long as landlords receive, quote, just and reasonable returns, unquote. If Prop 10 passes and cities choose to implement rent control, the Legislative Analyst Office believes the likely effects would be some renters would pay less rent, some landlords would receive less rental income, some renters would move less often, some landlords would sell their rentals to owner-occupiers, thereby reducing the supply of rental housing. And finally, the market value of rental housing would be less than it otherwise would be. And so it would be less attractive financially for developers to build new rental housing. Supporters include the California Democratic Party, Eric Garcetti, Mayor of Los Angeles, the California Nurses Association, the California Teachers Association. Opposing are the California Chamber of Commerce, the Republican Party, and the San Jose Mercury News. Prop 11. Prop 11 is a proposed statute put on the ballot by Citizens Initiative. Prop 11 would carve out an exception to current state law so as to allow ambulance companies to require their workers to remain on call during uh, rest break, meal and rest breaks. It would also mandate that interrupted breaks not be counted towards the number of breaks workers are entitled to receive, and it would require the ambulance companies to pay workers at their regular rates during those interrupted breaks. Coming out in favor are the California Republican Party and the San Jose Mercury. Opposing are the California Democratic Party and the California Teachers Association. Prop 12 is a proposed statute put on the ballot by Citizens Initiative. It would ban the sale of meat and eggs from veal calves, breeding pigs, and egg-laying hens if they are confined in areas smaller than a specified number of square feet. Veal calves would be required to have at least 43 square feet of usable floor space per animal, breeding pigs to have 24 square feet, and egg-laying hens to have one square, feet, one square foot. Violations would be misdemeanor crimes punishable by fines of up to $1,000. Prop 12 also creates a good faith defense for sellers relying upon written certification by suppliers. Supporters include the Humane Society, the ASPCA, and the California Democratic Party. Going on record against are the Association of California Egg Producers, the National Pork Producers Council, the California Republican Party, and Californians Against Cruelty, Cages, and Fraud. So that concludes the presentation on the November ballot measures. Here are some good online sources of info if you wish to go into more depth. For busier new voters who want a quick summary of the propositions and some voting nuts and bolts, check out the League's Easy Voter Guide, found in libraries and community centers and online at easyvoterguide.org. The Easy Voter Guide comes in five languages. Ballotpedia.org has good general overviews of measures, including background history and camp campaign finance info. Voters Edge California is another League website can be found at votersedge.org slash CA. By typing in your address, you get a personalized ballot, candidate, and measure information for elections at all levels of government, campaign finance facts for state candidates and measures, and a voting info section with everything you ever wanted to know about elections. The Legislative Analysts Office website at lao.ca.gov 
offers information on many aspects of California of government and is a great source of info if you wish to delve into the state's finances. The Sec Secretary of State's site at sos.ca.gov offers online voter registration along with a lot of election information for current and past elections. This is also where you can look to see what propositions might turn up in future elections. Finally, we'd like you to know that the League of Women Voters has speakers like me available before every statewide election. If you would like to schedule a presentation for your group, go to the League of Women Voters of California website at ca.lwv.org and click on Find a Local League. Your local league will be happy to arrange a speaker for your group. On behalf of the League of Women Voters and the better part, I thank you for joining us and for making the effort to be an informed voter.
Prop 8.